Hi and welcome! In this video, we're going to talk about free and basic variables, which are just another way for us to work with dependent systems. So in the past, I was a little bit hand-wavy about how we found solutions to dependent systems, but this language is going to help us be really specific about the way we write the solutions. So if we think back to our independent and dependent systems, in dependent systems, there are an infinite number of solutions. And so to formally describe those possible solutions, we're going to use free variables as parameters. So what this means is that we have this idea called free variables, and we're using these to parameterize the solution. So the solution will be written in term of these specifically designated variables, and those are our parameters. So let's talk more about these definitions and you can see what this looks like with some examples. So thinking about our pivot positions, we say that the columns of a matrix that have pivot positions correspond with basic variables. So these variables will have restrictions on what they can be, and because they have restrictions, they're sometimes called bounded variables. So this means that when you're solving the system, some of the variables that you're solving for have specific designations for their solutions. This could mean they have a specific value like y equals five, or it can mean that y is somehow bounded by whatever you choose for x, so y equals two x minus one. So this will make more sense when we see it with a matrix, but the idea here is that if you have a pivot position in a column, then the variable represented by that column corresponds to a bounded or basic variable. Then the columns of a matrix with no pivot positions corresponds to a free variable. So it's a free variable because it can be any real number. So we can choose any real number we want to be the solution for that variable. And in this way, they are unrestricted. So there's no bounds, no restrictions on the free variables. Then when we're writing the solutions to dependent systems, we do this in terms of the free variables. So those free variables are our parameters. They can be anything. We use those to write the solutions. Then just a note before we do an example, all of these basic and free variables correspond to the part of the matrix that's the coefficient matrix. We don't really care about the augmented section in terms of free or basic variables. The augmented part is like what's on the other side of the equal sign. It doesn't have anything to do with the variables. So we just care about the coefficient part of the matrix. So the left-hand side of the matrix. Okay, let's look at some examples to see how this works. So we're going to do four examples where we're solving the systems that were represented by the augmented matrices. And in doing that, we're going to identify the basic and free variables. Before we get started, I just want to give a couple notes. So in all of these examples, I'm just going to think of the variables as x1, x2, x3, etc. So we won't use x, y, and z. We'll just use x with an index for all of our variables. Then the other thing I'm assuming is that you have some experience solving and finding solutions based on row reduced matrices. So I'm not gonna to spend too much energy explaining that. We're just going to look at these matrices again with this new language, identify the basic and free variables, and then write the solutions in a more specific way. So looking at our first matrix, I'm going to identify the pivots and the free variables. And I just do this column by column. So the first column has a pivot, and the second column has a pivot, and then the third column represents our free variable. So we have these ones, those are our pivots, and then we have this five and three, which are the column that is our free variable. So this tells me that my basic variables are x1 and x2 for the first two columns, and then the free variable is x3, that third column. This means that my solution is going to be entirely in terms of that free variable. So when I go to write the system of equations from this row reduced matrix, I'm writing x1 plus 5x3 equals negative 1, and x2 plus 3x3 equals 2. So to write my solution, I'm going to then solve x1 and x2 in terms of x3. So I just move everything around. I get x1 equals negative 1 minus 5x3. So I've just rearranged that first equation. And in the second equation, I do the same thing. So I get x2 equals 2 minus 3x3. Then when I go to write my solution, my solution is a point like x1, x2, x3. 
And instead of just writing the x1 and the x3, I'm going to replace them with the solutions I got. So I know that x1 is negative 1 minus 5x3, and then x2 is 2 minus 3x3, and then I leave x3 alone. So my solution has only one unknown, that's my parameter, my x3, and then I filled in the other positions with the solutions that I have, the restricted solutions. In this type of solution, we could pick any value for x3, but then all of the solutions will have this form where they're restricted in the first two components by this designation. All right, let's look at our next example. So in this matrix, we're going to identify the basic and free variables. So I'm going to first identify the pivots. So I see that I have pivots in the second and third columns. And so this means the first column corresponds to a free variable. We'll see here that because the column corresponding to the free variables is just zero, this has less of an impact on our answer. So the basic variables are x2 and x3, and the free variable is x1. So when we go to read off the solutions here, I write out my corresponding equations. So for the first row, I get x2 equals negative 1, and for the second row, I get x3 equals 2. So my last two variables, x2 and x3, are basic, and they actually are just equal to some value. They don't have anything to do with x1. So when I write my solution, my point will be of the form x1, x2, x3, and all I need to do is replace x2 and x3 with the values we got. So the solution is any point of the form x1, negative 1, and 2. x1 can be any real number, but the second two variables are fixed and they have to be negative one and two. Okay, let's look at two more examples. So in this matrix, I have four columns, so I'm gonna have four variables. I'll identify my pivots first because I think it's easier to see those. So I see a pivot in my first and my third column. And so this means the other two columns, columns two and four, correspond to free variables. So my basic variables are x1 and x3, and my free variables are x2 and x4. Now this is going to correspond to how we find the solution. So I'm going to read off each row and write it as an equation. So we have x1 plus 4x2 minus 8x4 equals 5. That's from our first row. Then I have x3 plus 10x4 equals 6 for my second row. Now, remember our goal is to write the solution in terms of the free variables. So x2 and x4 can be in our answers, but we need to write the other two variables in terms of these. So I'm going to solve both of these equations for x1 equals and x3 equals. When I do this, I'm getting x1 is equal to 5 plus 8x4 minus 4x2, and then x3 is equal to 6 minus 10x4. Then when I go to write my solution, my solutions are of the form x1, x2, x3, x4, and I'll just replace x1 and x3 with the solutions I got. So the free variables can stay as they were, but I replaced these other two variables with their restrictions. So this solution had two free variables, and we wrote the solution in terms of both of them. All right, let's do one more example. So here's a much larger matrix. This has six columns, and I'm looking at variables x1 through x6. Okay, I'm going to identify my pivots first. So I see that I have a pivot in column one, column two, column five, and column six. That means that columns three and four correspond to free variables. Just to note, one of these columns has values in it, the third column does, while the fourth column is all zeros. So just keep that in mind as we see how it impacts the final solution. So my basic variables are x1, x2, x5, and x6, and my free variables are x3 and x4. Now, to find the solution, we write down the equations represented by this matrix. So I'm getting x1 plus 6x3 equals 13, x2 minus 7x3 equals 5, then x5 equals 1, and x6 equals 4. 
So my fifth and sixth variables are already done. We know what their values are. But the first two variables depend on my x3. So I'll solve those. So I get x1 is equal to 13 minus 6x3. And x2 is equal to 5 plus 7x3. Then when I write down what my solutions look like, I have x1 through x6. And I'll leave my free variables alone but I'm going to replace the rest of them with what I have as their restrictions. So x1 is equal to 13 minus 6x3, x2 is equal to 5 plus 7x3, then our third variable is x3, and our fourth variable is x4. Those are my free variables. And then for the last two variables, I get 1 and 4. So in this solution, x3 and x4 can be any real number, and that x3 variable affects what x1 and x2 are. So there you go. The pivot positions help us determine the basic and the free variables, and it gives us a more formal way to write the solutions to a dependent system. In an independent system, we have only basic variables, and so we don't need to work this hard. But in the dependent systems, it's nice to have more formal ways for us to write the solutions. That way we all have the similar answers and we have a formalized process that we can follow. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.